vote and uh, we want to debate these and see if there's any issues with them before we send them to the full committee. Who's first on the sign up list? Where's Israel? He's on his way. Okay. Anybody here from the house? <laughs> okay. Um, I need to write down here after all. Hello, team. There we are. Hey. Apologize. You're okay. We have no presenters. So, so uh, let, <laughs> since uh, Delegate O'Queen's first on the list, uh, his bill is basically dealing with local school boards allowing commercial advertising on school buses. And uh, Senate bill, or House Bill 809, uh, it basically um, precludes any s sexual explicit material any uh, food that's not um, uh, approved by uh, the nutritional measures of the Federal Healthy and Hungry Free Kids Act, uh, any alcohol or any type of beverages. All the humdrum signs can't fit on it. So, uh, um, gambling, polit politics, we can't put our. Uh, I like Carico signs on it. So, uh, okay. Bellie King, since you're first one to walk in, let's go ahead. Sure. Uh, Shut it. Sure. Or, I haven't done this for you, so I was wondering a lot. <laughs> 399. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Sherman, members, Hospital 399 codifies that one of the recommendations that can't come out. You see these reports from the Board of Education every year they give us a report on different uh, recommendations. So this would provide, as you know, we already, uh, through schools, we already provide high school students information about it now. AB, AB, uh, National Baccalaureate, all the other information. As we're moving towards more career readiness, we want to also provide some ideas that are specific. We just had one that's uh, similar to this. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. I just realized there's a mic too. Uh, I don't think there was a Senate companion on this, but uh, this would basically provide other work related career readiness type information. And the timing on this, based on the, uh, the report, was that since we're redoing the high school uh, curriculum now on the graduation, the profile of the graduate is being kind of refined. This is a good time for us to provide a variety of information in addition to just academic or other work related uh, experiences they can also gain. So that's really recommended, doesn't it? It lays out about five or six different programs that we should be providing information on. All right, anyone on the committee want to ask Delegate King? Yes, Delegate King, when do you give it to the students? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, to answer the Senator's uh, question, I think this would be in the same context of the information that's already being provided, so whenever they're upgrading next year. So it's not a new requirement, they just add to the information that they're already providing to the kids. All right, anyone else? Anyone in the audience like to speak in favor of the bill? Anyone opposed? There's a motion and a second to report House Bill 399. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? All right, bill reports five to zero. No reason to come to committee. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. Now you know where we are. Yeah, so you are. You ready? Sure. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. House Bill 81. Oh, actually, I have. Oh, I'm sorry. 507. 507. I apologize. Good afternoon, everyone. House Bill 507 incorporates the standards of quality for uh, the Commonwealth dual language immersion programs. They've actually been very successful in a number of uh, jurisdictions, including Albemarle, Alexandria, Arlington, Fairfax, Harrisonburg, Mathis, my own district in Newport News. Language immersion allows for people who are English as second language students to be able to learn in both their native language as well as English during the course of the entire day. It's been shown to be uh, very impressive in California, Texas, and a number of other states. It allows uh, this. 
you, of course. I just want to comment. A uh, number of years ago, maybe 20 years ago, there was a big movement not to permit this kind of thing in the, this kind of programming, uh, bilingual education or dual language or any of that in, in the Commonwealth. So we put together a subcommittee and visited a number of programs and found out kids in those programs were outperforming <laughs> virtually all the other children. So I want to say I'm really in favor of this. Thank you, Delegate. Anyone else on the committee? Anyone in the audience like speaking today with the Chairman Thompson, Superintendent Association, like to right. Mr. Chairman, Mark Miller, Fairfax County Schools, as the delegate said, this is one of the most effective ways to turn English language learners into English language speakers who are very, very much in favor of this awesome. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members of the subcommittee, uh, Jeremy Pat, the SBA, we support the bill for the reasons stated. Jerry Weinstein, Federation of Teachers, we support the bill. Willow Blanks, Arlington, Alexandrian Falls Church. Anyone in the audience uh, in the opposition to the bill? There's a motion and a second to report the bill. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? I was going to talk to uh, Steve about this one before we arrive, full committee. All right? You may want to show up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. I do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other member of the House? All right. <laughs> House Bill 442. DOE's part versus the school board's part versus the school's part, just so I understand that. I don't know if the summary is very good. Sure. Um, so the Department of Education, they will uh, assimilate a list of all accommodations that's available for each of the tests. On a website? Um, well, how they uh, assimilate the, the, the list, I'm not sure that the director said how to do it, but the director said you do it. Um, and so then they get that list to the school board, further questions <coughs> all right anyone else on the committee let me ask the audience real quick anyone in the audience like to speak in favor mr. chairman Jim council representing Prince William uh, this bill represents a priority of ours it's a good bill and we hope you'll act favorably about it and mr. Thank chairman you. David Bailey for the Virginia Association for Career and Technical Education who fully support the bill thank you thank you Anyone else in the audience? All right. Anyone in opposition? All right. We need a motion. All right. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that we report the bill. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Bill is reported 5 0. Thank you. No need to come to the full committee. Thank you, sir. Thanks. All right. Any more patrons? Is your 
boss anymore. He is Okay. Um, so as we were talking about delegate coins, um, if you like the the uh, idea that you can put uh, advertising material on school buses uh, and display them in a, in a matter, and it's it's restricted, you can look at all the restrictions. No gambling, politics, tobacco products, or anything like that can be put on there. Only type of food is the ones that the U.S. Department of Agriculture and uh, pursuant to the Federal Health, Healthy Hungry Three Kids Act that can be on it. No uh, sexual explicit material uh, can be on it. And the only question I have is, and maybe the school board people who are here, if this is approved, is there any fee that you're receiving for that advertisement to allow it to go on the bus or what? How does that work? Where's the money go and do you receive anything? Mr. Chairman, I think the idea is to let school boards sell advertisements on, on the bus. So I, presumably, I, I guess the idea is that yeah, we would, local business would pay us to put an advertisement on the bus. I mean, it's not our bill. I, I don't want to problem sure. with the bill, but um, I think it was presented at a request of one of the delegates. Well, that's why I just, I, he's not here. I'm just no. curious and curious how that how that money is earmarked and what it's used for if you do it. Um, so it, it, the discussion um, in committee in the House was that it would be for, you know, whatever the school system wanted to use the money for. The, the bill doesn't designate that you have to use it for a certain, okay. certain purpose. Right, well, I, I'm not going to do anything to gets here but I, I just wanted to get it out there and try to find out that question and um, I mean that's the the last two is the only two that that I really had some concerns about um, the one that um, Billy Mullins had said no impact but there is a full-time position that's uh, required in that to identify these students so Mr. Chairman since we're here, I have a question. Uh, House Bill 330, and maybe some of the school officials are here while we're waiting for Delia and Nancy. Does anyone know how in the world we got to the point that we need a bill in the Virginia State Code to allow a child to have sunscreen in school? And I would love to know why.
arguing with this bill. I'm not having a problem with the bill. I'm saying that's the background of why they were prohibited and, um, and why they needed some sort of permission. And I think that that's that is something that might happen in Camden. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, Newport News. Newport News. But that was written. schools try to use common sense that's when you get us doing get involved and when there's nothing that somebody is not allergic to and and so when schools do something like this without using common sense you end up here with bills and us having to do things that we shouldn't have to do so Cindy let me ask you a question. I'm starting to get, and I, let me just explain to the, the committee here. I'm starting to get texts from all these committee members saying we can't come for another committee. Well, we're going to have to take them up. We're going to have to make, make these decisions without them if, if they're not coming because um, there's plenty of work for us to do after this. So, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to start taking them up. Um, discuss them. Why, uh, Cindy, is there not some way hearing the explanation from Senator Donovan that, that it's approved by the FDA, not <coughs> regulated by it, that the school couldn't adopt some type of policies? That I, I think the school could adopt some type of policies. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. They sound nice. And yeah. instead of putting in the code, yeah. well, once again, our conversation earlier. Right. Uh, and, and getting to Mark's uh, comments of using common sense, why, why, are we, why are we passing emergency legislation when the school can already do this? I, I think the school can have their own policies around it. All right. Uh, yeah. I mean, Kathy, you have anything to rebut? Kathy Bircher with the Education Association. I just wanted to point out from the teacher's perspective, um, when, if a child has sunscreen, and shares it and uses it on another child who has an allergic reaction, and I don't disagree that everyone can, there's allergies everywhere, and that parent then comes after the teacher and demands their job and their license. That Those are truly, we have cases like that where we've defended our members on cases like that. Um, but, so, but, but Kathy, what if they have peanut butter on their hands and wipe it on another child? Do you, exactly. You know, we can't buy, ban peanut butter from the child. Yeah. You, you, I mean, actually, school, school boards board have made that decision. Mr. Well, Chairman. Look, I'm in the healthcare field. I get the liability thing. Um, but you policies protect you. And so, you know, if you have a policy of unscented sunscreen and the kids don't share, then if they do, you cannot mi micromanage everybody's behavior. The problem with a bill like this is if we presume you have to come to us to get this, we have all of a sudden changed the rules about how much authority you have to make decisions that are common sense. And I would hate to see us, it's hard enough to make the decisions we make together. Let's not add more to them. And Mr. Chairman, Senator Dunn, I don't disagree. We actually have no position on this bill, but I did just want to mention the types of things. And I also don't disagree that we do have processes to protect teachers, but you know, I just wanted to share the types of things that truly go on um, to our, our workforce in our schools. And it's wrong. Absolutely. All right. So in any way, I mean, parents sue for uh, the coach running them up and down the hill, and they were tired. Well, so, play enough. right, play enough. So, I don't know that anything we do in the law prohibits that lawsuit from happening. It just, uh, if there's a policy, it's like Senator Dunman has said, then you have guidelines that you go by that you can defend yourself on. Uh, and I think if Cindy and can come up with some policy 
uh, recommendations that I, I think that's the best route to take, uh, especially since we're doing something uh, according to this bill that's emergency legislation that evidently needs to go into effect immediately. Policies can go into effect a lot quicker. All right, uh, any, anybody else on the, in the audience like to speak to the bill? All right, anyone on the committee like to make a motion on the bill? Well, I'm, I, uh, yeah. uh, problem is we have so many bills and that we weren't even going to have a committee meeting today but because the chairman sees the number of bills that were being signed we're trying to get these bills out so that we can address the ones that you're sending over yeah I'm I'm, I'm reading this text as we go um, All right, his, his comment is the concerns get, uh, Cindy, his concerns are it's considered a drug. But um, I think Mr. there's Chair, an argument for that. And with all due respect to the position, um, in our analysis, we said it was an FDA regulated topical substance. In our analysis, it couldn't be correct. Uh, but topical substance is an FDA regulated product. So, in that sense, it's categorized by FDA as an over reside best in the Department of Education and not the Virginia Code <coughs> or in a school um, school board and it, you know, same thing for Claritin over the counter or anything else and so I just I just think we're you know to, to codify every little microscopic detail is too much that's my opinion I wouldn't kill it without him here either so I don't want to wait here for I move to send to the committee with that without a recommendation. Without a recommendation. Second. All right, there's a motion and a second. Send committee without recommendation. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. He'll need to come to full committee. Well, he's got one more. Uh, because there's not going to be a recommendation, and you can explain to him the concerns. And, right. and uh, he'll just have to until the chairman gets to him on the ones that we're not hearing in subcommittee. Okay. okay. Uh, but to Mr. Chairman and, and somebody in the audience may answer this, uh, Senator Dunham yeah. brought up the same as Claritin or something. Or, can you have Claritin at school without a doctor's they prescription? Have a policy that's regulated by by local school board policy. So. So if you can have Claritin, yeah, why? Yeah, exactly. So it's not prohibited by law. It would just be up to the school board. So I'm not aware of any prohib prohibition in federal law or state law about sunscreen. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Once again, we got differences of opinion on school boards. Um, The other bill that Senator Yancey has is House Bill 329, uh, the high school graduation requirement course load. Um, does anyone here like to speak on that bill? Came out of the House 98 to nothing. 
is establishing the high school graduation requirements to permit students to exceed the full course load. Tom, do you have any uh, insight on why that's here too? Vacancies and appointments on the school board. Yeah, this is Mr. Chairman, HB81 allows school board staff to be granted extra time up to 180 days if needed when searching for and hiring a new superintendent. Okay, we'll let you get your grant. Yeah. So it's pretty, it's a small government bill limiting some requirements of school boards. Um, right now, we're just moved. Excuse me, sorry, I ran up the stairs. <laughs> I thought by this time of the session I would be in better shape. The, um, uh, so right now, every state in the nation except for Kentucky and Utah allow unlimited amount of time for school board to hire a superintendent. In Virginia, so I, my, my original bill, we amended it in the House, was that we were to do what the rest of the country does. And we amended it so that we could just ask for one hundred and eighty days, up to one hundred in this way, you're not, you know, when you're hiring a superintendent, maybe they may have enough job, they have enough you know, and if it's going to be wrong, you know, you would be kind of forced at when you're getting close to the end, you either hire your second choice or third choice, or you might not even have someone. So this is really. Um, so are you extending it another 180? Yeah, but up to another one. Up to, okay. Yeah. So, right. What does this matter? So I'm sorry. Right now, it's 180 days. So it could go a year. It could go a year. Yeah. All right. Any questions? Okay. Anyone in the audience like to speak for or who? Mr. Chairman, members of committee, Michael Malloy, Fairfax County Schools. We actually just did a superintendent hiring, and six months sounds like a long time through the process, but by the time you do a nationwide search, you have community forums and what you're looking for in a superintendent. Uh, you have school board members visit, you know, school divisions to interview people. Um, it, 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 the process can go very, very quickly. Uh, what we learned was that there's no process by which we can be extended because the uh, the code language right now is absolute about the 180 day time frame. So if you run up against 180 days, even if the state superintendent wanted to give an extension, they couldn't. So this just tries to help remedy that to, to give a mechanism by which an extension can be granted. All right. Um, okay. Move the second of the report, House Bill 81. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No need to come to the full committee. Okay. Um, any news? With the, with the technology the way it is, I'm getting a um, <laughs> Yancey's. Yancey's debating his bill here on the <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 
Yes. That's what uh, me and uh, All right, there's a motion and a second to recommend the bill to the full committee uh, with no recommendation. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Oh, Queens, yeah. trying to get them here um, you know I know that uh, David's in, in or Yancey Delegate Yancey is in the full committee also they don't have a proxy prop process like we do so they have to stay in committee and back and forth here none of them can get here because they're in full committee so we'll have to move these to the full committee on uh, on the next meeting. So if it's no, uh, if I can get a motion on Delegate O'Quinn's. Second motion, forward with no recommendation. All right. Have a motion and a second to recommend House Bill 809 uh, to the full committee without recommendation. All the bills are Sure.